Hello guys, welcome back to Remove Before Race and today we're testing the DB11 V8 Volante, which is of course Aston Martin speak for drop top. Now we've done a very, 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 very detailed review of the coupe version of this car, the DB11 V8 coupe. So if you want to see all the stuff about the partnership between Mercedes and Aston in terms of the electronic brain of the car, the engine that's come over from Mercedes AMG, and indeed just the basics of the new DB11 compared to the previous DB cars, then check out that video. I'll put a link here now and at the end of this video. This video is more about the Volante itself. It's about that soft top. How has it affected design? How has it affected daily use, boot space, the interior of the car, the silhouette, etc. So that's what we're going to address first. And the first bit that I want to address is what you see immediately now is the silhouette of the car, the design. And it's quite interesting in the DB11 Volante. So what I want to do first is do the little party trick and close the roof. Now the roof can be operated at speeds of up to 28 miles per hour and you can just use the key to do it if you're standing close to the car as well. I quite like that, it's a bit of a party trick, isn't it? Remove the badges and the front end is very traditional DB. It's got a really wide front, nice arches. You've got the wing design on the side which comes into the wheel arch allowing air pressure to escape. The V8 of course has two holes on the clamshell bonnet which opens up and just looks glorious when it's open to reveal the engine. There is really no bad angle on the front at all. It's really one of the most gorgeous things on the road. Now, one thing that's quite interesting about this design compared to the coupe, and it's the bit that changes the look of the car the most, is if you check our review on the coupe, there's a design feature on the rear called the floating C-pillar. And of course, it makes the C-pillar look like it's floating. And it also serves the aerodynamic purpose of the air coming through that front wheel arch where the gap is between the wheel and the wing through the curly cues underneath the wing, pushing the air through into the gap that does not exist on this version of the car. So gone is that floating C pillar. And that particular part of the design, it was a bit controversial for some people. Some people liked it, some people didn't. This is a lot more traditional Aston Martin in its shape because it hasn't got that design feature. And I think if anything, if you look at especially the rear quarter view of this car, it looks a lot more traditional DB and not as brave in design as the coupe. Now I quite like the coupe's floating C pillar as long as it's spec correctly. Um, it doesn't sort of offend me in any way, but for people who prefer that pure sort of look, this still has a very rackish looking coupe roof line. They've done a really, really great job of maintaining a very sharp look to the roof that a lot of soft tops end up losing. So I'm impressed with the way that this looks. It could have gone very wrong, it hasn't. If anything, I think the rear quarter looks better than the coupe. Now if I pull the roof back down, again my favorite little party trick. Now, if you hold the button down one more time, it will also pull down the windows. Now, this is quite interesting. Because Astons generally have very broad shoulders, when you have the Volante versions, they, the shoulders, especially on the rear, look even broader, and it gives it a very masculine, very sporty-looking stance. And then you guys suddenly notice that this car has a big blue interior. Now, this paintwork is actually ultramarine black, which is a very dark, dark, dark black with a very strong metallic blue in it should any light hit it. So it's a gorgeous metallic paint. The roof, as you saw, was also blue, or maybe you perhaps did not notice. And we've got this blue interior. Now I'm gonna walk you through that blue interior in a minute. Um, it's a really interesting bit of this car. I really like it, but we'll talk about that soon. So the silhouette of the car with the roof down, it looks really sporty. It makes the shoulders look more exaggerated. The car looks more planted almost. And again, it's very traditional Aston Martin. I also quite like these wheels. I don't think the DB10 wheels 
worked as well on the DB11 because they weren't as inset as on the concept car. But I think I like these more. I'd love to know what you guys think about them. The boot capacity has gone from 270 in the coupe to 225 in this Volante and you also get 20% more than the DB9 before it and you can still fit a set of golf clubs in there and you also get a wind deflector that's packed away in the boot as well. I really like the thick round exhaust tips coming out of the quite aggressive diffuser on the rear as well. Overall it finishes off a rear with very muscular shoulders indeed. But now I want to show you inside only for the sake of the fact that the interior is so lovely in here. It's going to be a bit of a Marmite thing. I'm warning you, it's either love it or hate it. But it is interesting how far you can go with Aston Martin spec and get away with it, in my opinion. Now, it's pretty blue in here, as you guys can see. I think it looks stunning. I want to know what you think. I don't think there's any other car in the world, and please, by all means, correct me if I'm wrong, that you can get away with having this color of interior. I don't think it would work in S63. I don't think it would work in Ferrari. Uh, maybe Porsche, actually. Porsche, you might be able to get away with it. But this particular blue, it's got a slight hint of green. Thus, it works well with the Aston logo here. And of course, you've got the leather broguing, which is a first in any road car, which we discussed in the coupe review. And then you've got this dark ash open pore wood, which has got such a shine to it. When I first saw it, I thought it was the chopped carbon like you get in the, uh, the new DBS Superleggera, but it's not, it's actually wood and it's probably the nicest wood finish I've ever seen in a car. Um, it's just got a lovely marble-like shine to it. So that's a really nice option in any DB car at the moment. As I said before, I really do like the steering wheel. Those of you are wondering whether I put a matching shirt on on purpose, yes, I did. I'm very sad, but I've done it now and there's no turning back. But now since we're in here, why don't we actually turn the car on and just get some revs going. So I'm gonna do the startup. We're gonna start in Sport Plus. The AMG engine tuned by Aston comes to life. Now let's give it some beans. sounds brilliant and again it's not like the AMG sound it is quite unique to Aston it's got its own tune which is great it's what Aston customers want it doesn't sound like the AMG versions that just doesn't get old and of course with the roof off you've got access to it all the time which is brilliant so we'll talk more about that on the drive I do want to talk about how the rigidity changes but now I want to go on the drive. I want to show you how this Volante is different to the Coupe in terms of actual driving, ride quality, performance, etc. And I want to also talk about the quality of the roof when it's closed in terms of daily living and indeed in the way it looks. So let's get this actual road test started. So this is what the Volante experience is all about. Sunshine, roof down, We'll stick it into sport from GT mode. Then you're getting so much more of the exhaust note coming through, of course, as you would expect. And it changes that experience of the DB11. And of course, if you've got long hair like me, you look a little bit more of an idiot. But we'll take that. So this is the V8 DB11. So it's running the four liter bi-turbo V8 the one that's sourced from Mercedes AMG, the engine produces close to 510 brake horsepower, and it's just a little bit shy of the V12 on torque, a tiny bit, which makes it really quite a compelling choice for someone who wants a DB11, because on the road, being a lighter car than the V12 and having almost as much torque, you've really got a car that actually feels as fast. But the thing about this engine is it's the way that it delivers power compared to other bi-turbo engines. It's got such a linear power curve. And what that means is that rather than having the all or nothing power delivery of most bi-turbo and twin-turbo units, it gives you a very smooth power delivery, much more like a naturally aspirated engine. And the reason for that is 
this car's engine is a hot V setup, which means that the turbos are nestled within the cylinder banks rather than outside. So that means you haven't got the lag that you normally associate with a turbo engine. So it's a really great feeling engine in terms of the way that it smoothly de delivers power to the driver exactly when you want it without the all or nothing that normally is associated with a bi-turbo. And of course, if you're driving a Volante, you switch it into Sport Plus and the engine delivers you one of the best exhaust notes on the market right now. Listen to that thing roar. And this is the big pull towards the Volante over the Coupe. Of course you get to enjoy all of this wonderful summer feeling and the open sky above you, but you get access to that sound system, that wonderful exhaust that Aston have tuned for this AMG engine. Very Aston Martin, very exciting. Now one topic that always comes up with drop tops, roadsters, cabriolets, spiders, is how does the car feel once you chop the roof off in terms of handling? And the good thing about the DB11 is I can't discern any difference between this and the coupe as far as handling characteristics go. It seems to have maintained the same type of handling. Um, much like the coupe, there isn't much body roll that you can judge in this, so you don't get an idea of rear grip. But it is as good as the coupe, in my opinion. Certainly, as with the coupe, this is electronic steering, and it is a really decent steering setup. You do feel where the wheels are and it gives you confidence in terms of where you're turning the front of the car. Pair that with a really good ZF 8-speed box and what you end up with is a car that is basically the same as the coupe so all you have to worry about as a buyer is do I get the drop top of the coupe? You're not worried about the dynamics changing or all the other important stuff with the performance. As I said before, I've got a great love for this driver's zone. The more I've used it, I do like the digital display. I like the steering wheel a lot. I mean, the old one was terrible. And the paddle shifts are lovely. Just the metal feel so much better than some other manufacturers. If I pop the car back into sport now. Now, the other good thing is you can operate this roof while you're on the move up to 30 miles per hour. So you don't have to stop, which is pretty much the modern standard on roofs now. And one thing I didn't mention on purpose when I was showing you the interior was what the soft top looks like in terms of the quality when it's closed. And I've mentioned this in the past about cars that have removable roofs. It's really important in my opinion, especially in a luxury car like this, that they have the right fit and finish when they're closed. And similarly to something like the S63 Cabriolet from AMG, when this is closed, it just looks like the coupe's roof. It's got the same fit and finish, it looks thick. I'm told there's something like 13 plus layers inside here. And the benefit of that, of course, is when I'm driving this, I'm discerning no difference at all in terms of outside noise coming into the cabin. The finish is lovely, you've still got Alcantara up here. It all looks really solid and really well made. And this is a great thing when you come into a drop top, you really are expecting, especially from Aston Martin, a design inside that is as luxurious as the coupe. And it comes back to what I was saying earlier, that you don't want less of an experience just because you happen to choose the Volante over the coupe. One thing I did find myself doing, however, is using this Volante a lot more than I was the coupe. And I think part of the reason that I wasn't using the coupe as much is that the suspension in the V8 was a little bit harsher because it was more of a driver's car than the V12, as we said in the other review. But with this Volante, I feel the ride is just a lot better than the coupe version. So I found myself using this as a daily a lot more than the coupe. It just, it just seems to chew up miles and deal with the bumps in the road a lot better than the coupe was. I also found myself using just the standard comfort GT mode and GT suspension a lot more than I was in the coupe. It's just one of the most comfortable Astons to just chew up loads and loads of miles in 
in a lot of comfort and loads of style. So what do you end up with with this Volante? You've got performance that is very similar to the coupe. You've got handling that hasn't really been compromised by chopping off the roof. You haven't got wind and outside noise coming into the car with the roof closed. Of course you've got the ability to put the roof down and enjoy good weather when you have it. And then suddenly you've got a ride that's a lot more agreeable to worse road conditions. And you find yourself encouraged to use the car more and more because of that particular fact. It's quite a compelling choice then for someone who wants a DB11 because you're getting a car that hasn't got the usual negatives associated with chopping a roof off. You actually get a different exterior design in terms of taking away one of the braver elements of the coupe and bringing a more traditional DB design to this particular version of the car. And then when you do decide to put the roof down, suddenly you've got that much more in terms of experience than what the coupe can offer you. So whereas generally speaking, I'm always a coupe man, I think this is maybe one of those rare instances where I'd be happy to go with the Volante just because you get that extra experience without any negatives. So guys, I hope you enjoyed that additional piece to our full DB11 review, Aston's spearhead of their second century. I hope it was useful if you're thinking of buying the car as well. As always, as you always do, please do like and share this video. We always get wonderful comments in the comments section about why doesn't this channel have more subscribers? Well, you guys can help by sharing it and liking it as much as you possibly can. We've got loads of great performance cars coming over the summer at Remu Before Race. Now for me, while this good weather is lasting, I'm gonna enjoy this Volante as much as I can before I have to begrudgingly give these keys back to Aston Martin. Take care guys and I'll see you again next time.